All right, here we go. Uh, look, so we talked about a couple of things last time, right? We're in section two one here. Oh, where's my where's my notebook? Sorry. Now, when when I show you where my videos go, I have two calc classes and a pre calc class. So, if you see when I'm starting the videos, you'll see the time around two o'clock. I'm starting the videos. That's th those are yours, right? So I am I'm gonna try and be. Uh, uh, um, I'm a little lazy, so but I'll give you the link where the where the videos all go, and then you know you can you can find them. This particular video right now is number five sixty one. Not not that that's of interest to you, but uh, uh no on. Uh, YouTube I'm going to give you the link right to my channel um, so anyway so we're talking about uh, 2.1 right uh, domain so I'm looking at uh, just a couple problems because I already taught taught you these the three little steps for domain at, uh, uh, at this point right can't divide by zero can't take a square root of negatives, right? Those are really all, or a combination of them, right? Those are really all we have to think about right now. So I am looking at uh, number 62. I've got a function. Uh, which is 4 over square root of x minus 9. So this is a combination of 2 because I'm dividing by something that could be 0. I can't do that. And I, am, I have a square root, right? So what are we, what's our rule about square roots? The inside has to be greater than or equal to 0, but since it's a denominator now, we need x minus 9 to be greater than zero, which means x is greater than what? Nine, yep. So my domain, which I want in interval notation, right? And like regular human speak, it's all numbers bigger than nine, but we want to say from nine to infinity. I'm using an open parenthesis whenever I can't get to the number, when I can't use the number. And of course, on an infinity or minus infinity, it's always open because you can never get there, right? We'd like to look at this on our graph. I'm going to use Desmos a lot because it's just a better picture than the calculator, but I'll show you things on both. When you're practicing at home, and you can get a Desmos, you can get the Desmos app on your phone. Uh, you can you do that, not during a test or a quiz, but um, it's good to... Um, be able to take a look at this on Desmos compared to the 8384 uh, because the 8384 resolution is pretty bad. Anybody pick up a calculator for free yet at the Math Learning Center? You do not have to buy a calculator. You're going to want one because I'm going to test using it, right? Um, make sure you get it. So f of x equals, uh, what was it, 2? Four, yeah, 4 over, thank you, 4, divided by square root is SQRT, X minus 9, right? So you can see, kind of, uh, you should kind of be able to figure out my domain and range here. Do you see that there's no values at 9 or left of 9? Right, if I, if I put in the line X equals 9, that's a vertical line, right? So you can see that I have nothing there or left of it. So my domain is matching. What are you thinking about the, the range? What do you, when you're looking at that graph, what do you think is the lowest y value I ever get to? Not one. 
it's getting closer and closer to zero, right? Um, if you if you think about, I could put a billion in here, right, or a godzillion, right? That's a giant. That's a giant number, right? A monstrous number, uh, and so it's like four over infinity. It never quite gets there. But if I take four and divide it among a million people, nobody gets anything, right? So range is zero to infinity. Yeah. Nice. And of course, yours is the, the tough one. I think I gave you 50, number 65 to do. That one you got to think a little bit. Okay? Nice. We need to talk about, so, so that was just a, one quick question from last, uh-oh. I can't move the damn tablet. This sucks. So uh, I want to talk about uh, combinations of functions. So um, I can add functions, subtract them, multiply them, divide them, and something little magical happens with the domains when I, when I do that. Um, so let's see if we can figure out what happens. So I'm just going to take two functions, f of x and g of x. Let's say uh, x squared minus 4 and g of x um, Uh, don't tell me. Uh, sure, x minus 2. And I'm going to take a look at what happens when I, when I add these together, when I subtract them, when I multiply them, when I divide them. First of all, what's the domain of f? What x values am I allowed to square? What numbers am I allowed to square? All numbers. So the domain is all numbers. If you can, can you see this parabola? Do you see, do you, do you recognize it at all? X squared minus four. How wide does this graph get? Infinitely wide. So I'm talking about the shadow on the floor on the x-axis is everywhere, right? What's the domain of G? Yeah, same, right? If I, if I think about uh, X minus two, right? So you can, again, again, you can see it goes infinitely wide. So it's all of the x-axis. So that's all reals too. What's going to be uh, interesting is the domain of f plus g is the intersection of the domains of the other functions. So it's the reals intersect with the reals which of course is just the reals, right? Take the number line and take another number line underneath it. Do they match up everywhere? Yes, right? So it's the intersection of the domains. Okay, let's, let's see what happens. Uh, so I like to call my new function h, and I'm gonna add f of x plus g of x. That's the same as me writing this. But a lot of students get confused by this. They think I'm adding the functions and then multiplying by x. But remember we talked about that input the, this, where you put the coins in the soda machine. That x there is not, doesn't mean per, uh, multiply. It means that's where you put the numbers. So, but I like the first notation better. I like this one better. Because all I have to do is, is write, okay, x squared minus 4 plus x minus 2, right? And I get what? x squared plus x minus 6, right? It's nice if I can factor that. Can this one factor? Say yes. So I'm looking for two, number, two integers that multiply to negative 6 and add to... positive 1, right? I'm looking at that coefficient of that middle term. So it's what? x plus 3 times x minus 2. 
Yeah, you with me? Nice. So this is my new function. What does it look like? What shape is it? It's a parabola, yes? So it looks like a, a, a smiley face or a frowny face. When the leading coefficient is positive, it's a, it's a smiley face, right? How wide does this graph get? Forever, right? So domain, all real, all numbers, right? Are you everybody okay? Good. Let's let's uh, uh, let's multiply these functions, right? So let's call our new h of x f of x times g of x. We definitely don't want to use the star the cross anymore as multiply. We're going to use the dot, right? Uh, so that is what. Um, don't tell me. X squared minus four. Times the x minus two. You should already see that I'm going to get some kind of cubic function, yes. So I'm going to get some some kind of cubic function, right? And we know again that this this guy is as wide as possible, right? So the domain is going to be again the intersection of the domains of f and g. Um, so what do I get here? X cubed. Minus 2x squared. Is this okay with everybody? Everybody's following? And this one again does factor nicely. Um, and we're going to learn this in chapter 3. I get an x plus 2 times an x minus 2 times another x minus 2. So this thing could be written as x plus 2 times x minus 2 quantity squared. Is anybody kind of worried about factoring right now? Kind of, they haven't done it in a while, right? Definitely you did it all in Algebra 2 when you were finding roots of quadratics, right? So we're going to do all that again, but we're also going to go further. We're going to go to all polynomials, x cubed functions, x to the fourth functions, etc. So the domain here of h, again, is all reals. It's Right, and I can tell the domain by the picture, by the graph, right? Or I could, I could be saying, what x's am I allowed to put in, right? What, what x's am I, what numbers am I allowed to cube? All of them, right? What x's am I allowed to square? What x's am I allowed to multiply by four, right? There's nothing I can't put in, right? Is that making sense? Uh, the division on that one is, is definitely interesting because there's an extra rule on my domain. I, I can put, I can, I get the, the intersection of the domain, but I also can't divide by zero, right? So that, that particular uh, h of x is kind of interesting. So if it's f of x divided by g of x, right, we got that x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. That's x squared, x plus 2 times x minus 2. You remember that one, at least? Right? Uh, and the x plus, x minus 2's cancel, so I get x plus 2. It looks like I can put anything in there, but I can't put 2 in, right? So the domain here of h is all reals except 2. And of course, I could do that as an interval notation as minus infinity up to 2, union 2 to infinity. Kind of picturing the number line there with a hole over the number 2, right? So if I'm walking on there, I fall through the hole when I get to 2. Can't put 2 in. What's the graph look like? of h. Well, look at my result. It's a line, right? Right? When I put in 0, I get a 2. When I put in 1, I get a 3. So there's my line 
but at 2, there's a hole in the line. At x equals 2, there's a hole in the line. You can't see it on Desmos. Uh, or you definitely can't see it on the, on the 83, 84. Um, but I can, I can kind of fake it on Desmos. What did I have? Uh, I called it H, right? Doesn't matter, really. But upstairs, I had x squared minus 4. And downstairs, I had x minus 2. I know from my factoring work, I get something that looks like x plus 2. But at 2, there should be a height of 4, but it can't be there because it's not in the domain. So I can put in my point 2 comma 4 and see that it hits the line. Good, that's what I wanted. Go to my gearbox and then change the point to be hollow. Right? That making sense? So that's what it really that's what really is happening. How are we doing okay? The book doesn't ask you to factor yet. So don't worry about all the factoring I'm doing. I mean if you if you can factor, great. Uh, which one did I ask you to do? Yeah, sixty-five. Oh no, sixty-five is is just domain. Uh, which one did? What is it? Yeah, seventy-five. Yeah, I better do one like seventy-five because you're gonna get. Oh no, you'll be fine. Uh. No, you should be fine. Nice. Here comes the tough part. Then we'll take a little break. Okay. So this is the end of 2.1 right now. How are we doing? Are we okay? If it's, if it's too easy right now, enjoy it. Because, believe me, it gets pretty nasty. Pretty nasty pretty quick. We're talking about a difference quotient. And this is one of the things that's going to save you at the start of calculus. If you can do these difference quotients, you can do anything. So what we need to think about is we have some curve, let's say, right, some function. We, we want to be able to think of two points on the curve and think of the slope of the line that goes through those two points. And this is called a secant line. If you remember from high school geometry, we had tangent lines, they touch the circle once, or secant lines would touch the circle twice. So this is our secant line. And our function is f of x. So the difference quotient is gonna be the slope of the secant line. Um, so difference quotient is the same thing as saying m, right? Remember m, slope, uh, rise over run, yes? Sounding familiar? Good. So we usually had it like this. We said x sub 1, y sub 1. That's my first x and y. And then x sub 2, y sub 2 was my second one, right? So we got slope from rise over run, y2 minus y1, all this sounding familiar, all over x2 minus x1. Uh, but y values are f of x, right? So this is f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. That's all old stuff to us, right? Just lie to me, shake your head, yes. You know this already, yes? So if I gave you physical points, it's easy to calculate the slope, right? Yes? But I'd rather keep it arbitrary. 
And so what I'd like to do is rename our system. And what I'll do is I'll call the first point uh, uh, x. And the second point will be x plus h. And then I'll ask you how far away are those two points horizontally. How far away are those two points? On the x-axis, how far is that distance? It's right on the page. H. Nice. So this point here is uh, x comma uh, f of x. And this point is f of x plus h. Oops, sorry. x plus h comma f of x plus h. And then my secant slope is f of x plus h minus f of x all over x plus h minus what? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, right? What was my first? x. x, right? My first x is x. And so you see here, I get my formula for what we call the difference quotient. f of x plus h minus f of x, there's a difference. Divide, that's the quotient, divide by h. So the difference quotient gives the slope of a secant line given an x and an h. Am I, are we okay? Remember, take your Advil, probably 250 milligrams for Quarter, about 145, you'll be fine. There's some good difference quotient problems here uh, from number uh, number 79 to 90, right? Uh, let's try number number 80. These take time. You're not supposed to get everything right away. You have to go home. You have to make mistakes. You have to practice. You have to ask for help. Okay? So this is a tough part of section 2.1. So just be patient and try and follow procedure. Right? All right. So we got a function here. This is... 2.1 number 80. So I have my function f of x is uh, 1 minus 3x or negative 3x plus 1. I want to find the original function. I also want to plug in x plus h. Okay, so I want an original function and I want the original function evaluated at x plus h. Here's the key. Rewrite with empty parens. Right, do you see 1 minus 3x? Get one of those four color pens, you know, with the thumb click. If you're a nerd, you have one already. And put in the x plus h. You with me? Simplify it if you can. Get rid of parentheses, etc. And then go into our difference quotient formula, right? Remember, dq, same as m, right? Is f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. If you 
can't memorize it, put it on your formula sheet. You can use a formula sheet for every quiz and every test. If you're really dedicated, get the tattoo. Just put it somewhere where you don't have to take clothes off during a test, right? So I want to plug in here, right? So I get uh, 1 minus 3x plus 3h minus 1 minus 3x. Do you see what the hell is happening? The first piece is the function evaluated at x plus h. The second piece, which I'm subtracting, is the original function, careful with parentheses, all divided by h. Is everybody with me here? I want to try and simplify as much as I can. Right? So upstairs I get 1 minus 3x plus 3h minus 1 plus 3x. Right? I, uh, my signs switch there, right? You okay with that? All divided by h. This will be the, the key. Any term in the, that doesn't have an h in it, where you're simplifying, had better go away. If it doesn't, you're in trouble. So, so the ones will cancel, and the three x will cancel. And notice there's no factor of h in those. So my difference, oh, did I make a mistake somewhere? I did. This is a negative of 3h, right? Right? Yeah. Sorry. So I get my difference quotient is negative 3h over h. And of course, the h's cancel. So I get negative 3. But look at the line. Look at the original function. Right? Look at the original function. It's 1 minus 3x, right? So when x is 0, I got a 1. When x is 1, I got a uh, negative 2. I'm just plugging x values there, right? You remember plotting line in algebra 2. Pick an x, right? Find a y. Pick another x, find a y. You only need two lines, two points for a line, but you often would pick a third x just to make sure it's still on the line, right? So it's saying no matter which two points I pick here, what's going to be my slope? Negative three, and that makes sense anyway. It's a line. The line, the slope of a line is always the same, right? Or it's not a line. So I, it's weird, but I could pick x is 1 and h is 2, but there's nowhere in my difference quotient, there's nowhere to plug into an x or plug into, a, a, plug into an h, so my slope is still negative 3. Right? It doesn't matter which two points I pick. Let's do 83. We okay? Yes or no? Yeah, a nod, a thumbs up, a nod. Uh, uh, one of those that's, um, maybe I'm okay, right? The no look usually means no, you're not okay. When, you, when I see a student going like this. Or when they're going like this, no, you're not okay in that, right? <laughs> All right, this is number 83. Uh, so again, a difference quotient. F of x is, and, and so by the way, we're, we're, we've been torturing you forever with this math stuff. Why? Just so you can get the calculus. In calculus, you'll see all of these things you did, completing the square, factoring, difference quotient, domain and range, 
all of this stuff will pay off in calculus and you will see some of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. Discovered because uh, Newton was trying to figure out the locations of planets, right? We could see planets for, for, for a long time, right? Egyptians used, the, used it to, for the seasons and when the flood would come and that type of thing. Uh, ancient Egyptians, right? Um, and it turned out, well, the Earth is moving, right? The moon is moving around the Earth and moving. We're all moving around the sun. So are the other planets. So there's so much change happening at any time. It was calculus that helped us figure out how we could predict where things would be, how things would change, right? So, so that's what we're trying to do here. Uh, what's this thing look like? Well, if you don't know, all semester, and I'll put this one on my TI, you're going to graph it. Whenever I give you a function, graph it. That's what I want you to do. This is why I don't like using the TI here, because it's pretty hard to see here. Um, but again, practice things that you do with the calculator. With Desmos, you'll get a better picture. Okay. So if you remember, I went into y equal, right? And I'm typing the variable squared, uh, then what is it, minus x, plus 4. And my calculator always resets to zoom standard. Uh, so, but you, you might have the same setting as what you had before, and you can just go to zoom standard. That's the best way to start, zoom standard. So I'm going to pick two points on this curve and connect them with a tangent line, a secant line, sorry. And I'm interested in how I could calculate that slope quickly. And the way to do it is the difference quotient. So what do we need? We have our original function. What else do we need? F of what? What do I plug into the function? We just did one. X plus H, that's it. So, so notice I wrote everything with open parens. Everywhere there was an X. And I'm taking my time and putting in X plus H into every set of those open parens. This, this is the process. I'd like to simplify this, meaning get rid of those parentheses, right? So I'm going to do x plus h times itself. I'm going to distribute the negative, And I still have the plus 4. Do you remember, you remember something like this? It's a, do you remember this? What, what's your favorite four letter F word? Not foil, but that's what we're going to do, right? So we're going to, we're going to distribute, double distribute here. So I get x squared plus hx plus another hx plus h squared, and I still have minus x minus h plus 4. Is that okay with everybody? It's hx plus hx, oh, plus h squared, yeah, sorry. So it looks like I get uh, x squared plus 2hx, right, there's two of them, plus an h squared minus an x minus an h plus a 4. I was talking to my other, my calculus class about, as a mathematician, I could have gone and worked for the government. Most likely I would have worked on weapons or bombs or whatever, um, or become a math teacher. Uh, there are other things, but those are the main jobs. So I could I could build bombs and kill people quickly, or I could teach them math and kill them slowly. I chose that one. <laughs> We're ready for my difference quotient, right? DQ is the same as a, a secant slope, so whatever. 
but I know I need my f of x plus h, which is in black here. I need x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus x minus h plus 4 minus the original function, which was x squared uh, minus x plus 4, all divided by h. The hint here is if my uh, non-h factored terms don't go away, I did something wrong. So obviously this x squared is going to cancel with this one, right? This x is going to cancel with this one, and this 4 will cancel with this one. Uh, yeah, I could distribute the negative, but I know it's going to, it's going to cancel. If I, if I am going too fast, you make sure you tell me. I can always go back to something, right? I can always zoom in on something. We're okay? I'm sorry, everybody needs to have a mask on, I'm sorry. I, I hate it too, but uh, I, I do have inside knowledge that in the first week of October, they're gonna tell us it's optional. In that case, when it's optional, if you're sick, you put it on, right? Just to protect other people. Uh, right now, we're trying to protect ourselves and everyone else by having it on. Uh, believe me, you don't want COVID. It sucks. Well, I'm old. I'm diabetic. A little overweight. There's three strikes against me. It, it hit me so hard. It was... My girlfriend said, I'm surprised you didn't die. I was like, thanks. I love you too. <laughs> So what do I get here? What's left? I've got a 2hx plus h squared minus an h all over an h. Notice that every, every term has a factor of h in it. So I'm going to factor an h out. I'm going to factor an h out. Because I want those eight, that h in the numerator and the h in the denominator to cancel, right? And they do, right? So my difference quotient finally is two x plus h minus one. Well, we could pick two x values on the on the graph and plug them in and get, and get our slope. Right? Everybody okay here? Nice. So if I go back to my graph, uh, how about x is 1 and x is 3, right? Yes? So let me, let me redraw. So 1, 2, and 3, right? So at 1 and 3, what, what's h here? Two. 2, nice. So I'm going to do this the way we did it in 8th grade, or ninth grade, or whatever. And then I'm going to do it with our new difference quotient, right? So I, I need to figure out f of 1. It looks like I get 3. And I need to figure out f of 3. I get 7. So our 8th grade version is m equals 7 minus 3 over 3 minus 1. So I get uh, 4 over 2. I get 2. Our dq version, I get 2 times my x value plus my h value plus minus 1, right? Is it minus 1? So the x value is 1. We already said the h value is 2, right? Um, Uh-oh. Oh, h value is 2 x value is 1, h value is 2, right? Did I do something wrong? 
Anybody see if I did something wrong? Oh, wait, what's my difference quotient? Yeah, it's 2x plus h plus 1. That's right, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, tell me where. If you need me to zoom on something, let me know. I just got a mistake. I got to figure it out where. Give me a second. Anybody see my mistake? Hmm. Well, I don't know what it, where where I'm making my mistake, but they're supposed to match, so I'll figure it out and I'll redo it and save face tomorrow, Monday. Okay. Let's do one more. Where is it? Uh, we do F1. Yeah. Thanks for looking, though. Hmm. I'll figure it out. So, but, and I'm, I'm a little embarrassed, but I'll get over it because I, I, it happens a lot. Um, when, I, when I should be able to check a slope the traditional way and using this difference quotient. And I, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit me any second. I know it. I gotta be making some silly mistake with the with the eighth grade version. <laughs> All right. Well, let me try another one. It's okay. The one that I'm asking you to do is like the one I'm doing here. So this is number 90, 2.1 number 90. Break right after this problem, I promise. f of x is square root of x plus 1. Watch how I do this secant slope on, on Desmos. This is not that easy on the TI. So I'm going to put in my function f of x. And it is what? Square root of x plus 1? Mm 
and then I'm going to put in two arbitrary points a comma f of a and it's asking me do you want a slider a and the question the answer is yes and so I, you can see I can move my point here where I could actually drag the point on the curve and I want to put in my second point which is going to be a plus h comma f of a plus h and now I have my slider h so you can see I can move my second point away by adjusting h or I could move both points by adjusting the first but notice they stay h apart right the distance between them left to right is, is going to stay fixed whatever I have h to so I want the slope between those two points I have to find f of x plus h right notice what I'm doing I'm putting in x with an empty placeholder empty parenthesis but inside of that with my nerd pen I'm writing in x plus h so my difference quotient is now that f of x plus h if I can simplify minus the original function all divided by h this one gets a little tricky. I want to multiply here by the conjugate of the numerator over itself. So if you remember conjugates, a squared plus minus b squared is a plus b times a minus b. You remember that? So the, mi the middle terms drop out. I'm going to multiply this by the conjugate of that numerator. Wherever that radical is, I need the conjugate when I do one of these problems. So when I multiply this numerator, is everybody with me? When I multiply this numerator, right I get this first term squared right I get this a squared and when I square a radical the radical goes away right so I get just x plus h minus 1 the middle terms go away right if you see I'm gonna get a squared plus a b plus a minus a b minus b squared right the plus a b and the minus a b go away so I just get minus the second piece squared still over h times that conjugate how are we doing yeah yeah absolutely I like to say I'm Polish I'm not Russian even if I was Russian, it's still pretty funny. I'm Russian, but I'm not Russian. Right? So this piece is this times this, right? It's a radical times itself, so the radicals cancel, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Screwed up again. I'm sure that's what I did in the other one too. Something like that. Something that simple. Sorry. Look how it goes away now. Do you see it? The X's will go away. Right? X minus X. And the ones will go away, one minus one, right? So the only thing that's left upstairs is now H. And I've got a H downstairs that will cancel. That's what we're trying to get.
So these H's are going to cancel. And I finally get my difference quotient of 1 over square root of x plus h plus 1 plus the square root of x plus 1. All right. Well, there's my function. There's my original function, right? f of x is square root of x plus 1. Uh, I'm going to pick two points. I'm going to pick points that make it easy to do the calculations. I'm going to pick uh, uh, the point at 0 and the point at 3. I'm just picking those because I know I get nice values out of my functions are there. Right, what do I get when I plug in zero? I get square root of what? Yeah, square root of one, which is one. So I get the point zero, one here. And what do I get when I plug in three? I get two, yep. Okay, slope. Help me. Two minus what? One over three minus three minus zero. So I get one over three as my slope if I use the eighth eighth grade method. I want to pick this as my x and this is my h. So for my dq, right? I'm going to have x equals 0 and h equal 3, correct? Everybody with me? Okay. So I plug into my, my dq for my slope. I get 1 over square root of 0 plus 3 plus 1. There's my x plus h plus the square root of 0 plus 1. This is looking better. I just made some mistake in the other one. Do it over for me, right? It looks like I get 1 over the square root of 4 plus the square root of 1. That's 1 over 2 plus 1. Hey, it matched. It worked this time. I, didn't, I just made some mistake in the other one. But you'll do it over. Your problem is more like this one. Now it says, uh, it says, just find the difference quotient, okay? It just says find the difference quotient. It doesn't say do anything else. So you don't have to do this piece I'm doing, but I'm trying to show you what we got here. We got this new version of slope that's going to give us something special in calculus. So what, we had a is 0, right? Our first point was 0, right? And our h we took as 3, correct? And of course, we could calculate uh, that slope right uh, f of a plus h minus f of a all divided by h 
and then the one third. All right, let's take let's take a ten minute break. Come back at three twenty five. If you want, if you need it. It's the class, right? But you can go pre calculus YouTube, pre calculus difference quotient. Find find some nerd that you like, right? Um, so two point two is all about functions and the graphs. So we did a lot of it. We know how to find a point on the, on the graph. But I like the ones um, where they might not give you the function. There's some where they give you the function and some where they possibly don't give you the function. Right? So uh, this is number 25. So we already learned all this stuff, I think. But I'm going to add something else into it. Okay? So I've got f of x is equal to 2x squared minus x minus 1. Whenever I give you a function, you really want to you want to graph it, right? Whether I use uh, uh, my ti or, but I want you definitely using the um, Desmos as well. So I've got what? 2x squared minus x minus 1. And I'm already on Zoom standard, uh, but what's interesting is you see it goes through, it goes through one, right? So it looks like this thing is factorable, and so we are going to factor this one today. Uh, but I, I'm going to try and do the questions that they're asking first. It says, is the point negative one two uh, on the graph? Now, there's a way to plot points in TI-83, and I encourage you to look that up because you're going to want to make sure you have a way to check yourself, okay? Uh, I can cheat a little bit by going to my table, so second table, and scroll to, uh, scroll to negative 1 and see that it's on there, right? So that's a nice way to check, but it's nice to be able to plot a point as well. So you want to do a little research. TI-83 or TI-84, Google, right? TI-83, TI-84, plotting a point on a graph. Okay? Of course, what are we going to do? We're going to plug in F of negative 1 and see if we get what value? 2. So 2 times negative 1 squared minus a negative 1 minus 1. Notice every time I plugged in, I used empty paren, right? So I get 2 times 1 plus 1 minus 1, yes, 2. So yes, it's on the graph, right? I'm looking at number 25. Oh, I didn't give you this sheet yet. I'll give it to you next time. But I'm in 2.2, 2, number 25. It says, if x is negative 2, what is f of x? Right? So find f of negative 2. What do I have? 2x squared minus x minus 1, right? Changing my nerd pen to a negative 2 to plug into the empty parens. And then simplifying. Nine. Anybody else get nine? Uh, on my TI, Right? On my TI, I can just scroll to negative 2 and see that I got 9. What's nice on Desmos is I can say uh, f of x uh, equals uh, 2x squared 
uh, minus x minus 1. And then I can plot that point uh, negative 2 comma 9. Boom, hit the graph, right? That's what I'm looking for. It's nice to be able to do that on your calculator. So, so Google TI-80, whatever you have, plotting a point on a graph. Uh, it says, if f of x is negative 1, find x. So, I'm not plugging into x here, I'm plugging into f of x, right? Do you agree f of x is a y value? So I'm saying negative 1 has to equal that 2x squared minus x minus 1. Is that making sense? So I'm giving you an output. I want you to find me the input, right? So what do I get? I'm going to take that negative 1 and move it to the other side. It becomes a positive 1, right? So I get 2x squared minus x equals 0. And now I'm factoring, right? Is that making sense? I put the the y value equal to the equation, and then I try and simplify. So it looks like I can factor out an x, and I get 2x minus 1. So I get either x equals 0, or 2x minus 1 equals 0. That means x is 1 half. Look at the points I have there. I have 0, negative 1, and I have 1 half, negative 1, right? Right? They, they gave me the y value of negative 1. I had to find the x. It turned out to be the two x's, right? So back on Desmos, I want to plot those. 0, negative 1 on the graph, right? Yeah, you see it? Zero, negative one. And what was my other point? One half, negative one. Boom. Yeah? Desmos is, is kind of nice. You can, uh, um, you can click on points and it'll show you, but we know that we plotted those coordinates, but uh, what are the x-intercepts? Where does it look like it's hitting on the... So how do I, how do I find x-intercepts? I set the I set the function equal to zero. And I can factor this by quadratic formula, AC method. Um, I can use complete the square. We're gonna have we're gonna be able to do all of them. Let's do AC method on this, okay? So when I'm saying AC, I'm saying AX squared plus BX plus c equals zero, right? So what's, what, what is my coefficient a and what is my coefficient c? Yeah, two and negative one. So I get a negative two. So there's my product ac. I want to list the factors of negative two. So negative one and two, one and negative two. That's my only choice, right? Which one adds up to b? What is B? Negative one, right? So I want I want these two to add up to negative one. Have you seen this before? Sure you have. So we split the middle term. Too too many D's. 
So 2x squared minus x plus 1, oop, minus 1, now becomes 2x squared plus 1x minus 2x minus 1. Right? So I use these coefficients to write 1x minus 2x, which of course is minus x. Right? You with me? Split the middle term. Now I factor by grouping. What comes out of the first two? What, what's a common factor there? X. And then the second two, I can take out a minus 1. And I better get 2x plus 1 again or I'm in trouble. And I did. Right? I'm, I'm good here. So I have a repeated factor of 2x plus 1, and the remaining factor is x minus 1. I've got something times something equals 0. That means one of them's got to be 0, right? So 2x plus 1 equals 0, or x minus 1 equals 0. This one gives me x is negative 1 half. This one gives me x is 1. So I got the points negative 1 half 0 and 1 0. Let's plot those on Desmos just so we can see them. I had one zero. There's the intercept, right? Hit the curve and the x-axis. And the other was minus one half zero, right? Nice. So easy to do these things on Desmos, but if you're gonna do it on the quiz or test, you wanna make sure you can right be able to do it on your eighty three. No, only the calculator and your form sheet. Uh, of course, look at, look at how easy it is to check it on the calculator. Just go to that table again, right? And I'm looking for a y value of zero. Oh, here's one, one zero, right? I won't see the other one, but I can change my format table set I can move instead of moving by one delta table that means go by ones I can move by 0.5 right now go back to my table and I will see that negative 0.5 zero is there right what's the y-intercept we already found it, believe it or not. Yeah, just let x be 0, right? So f of 0 is 2 times 0 squared uh, minus, I forget already, minus 0, minus 1. So just a negative 1. And we already found that point, 0, negative 1. Say again? Yes, yes. Anytime. Split the middle term or higher. So the last thing I want to show you uh, in this section is the sign table, which is hideous. The book is not quite asking for sign tables yet, but it will soon. But I still want you to see one now. What we want to do is when we do these sign tables is we want to cheat. We want to look at the graphs and answer our questions from the graph. Verify the, the algebra we're doing with an obvious look at the graph, okay? 
So this is our first sign table. We ready? Yes, I need, I'll wait a little bit more. Question? Uh, where, where are we? Uh, yes, so uh, I'm saying group the first two terms to get together, right? And there's a fa shared factor of x in them. So I'm like on distributing, right? If you, if you see me, I could, I could go backward and say x times 2x, oh, that's 2x squared. x times 1, that's 1x, right? So I, so I, I think you might be talking about this line, right? Yeah, yeah watch this x times 2x plus 1 minus 1 times 2x plus 1 equals 0. And what I'm going to do is erase the common factor. And you can see my second factor of x minus 1. Right? So, I mean, it's, it's a little tough because I don't know when you took Algebra 2, Algebra 1, Algebra 2, this is all Algebra 1, Algebra 2 stuff right now. So, if you're really worried about the factoring, you go into uh, YouTube, factoring quadratics, right? All right, first sign table, here we go. I know it's painful, but the thing about school and life, I mean, think about you were when you were born, there was a bunch of people screaming in the room. It's pretty painful for everyone involved. But life is so good, you don't remember the pain. Even when life sucks, you get a slice of pizza or ice cream, whatever, right? Same thing is going to happen here in the math class. You're not going to remember this pain when you have the new pain of Calc 1. Or when you graduate and you're working and making lots of money, that you will not remember this pain. But you have to go through it to get to the next part. Now, computer scientists have a lucky, a lucky future. They could hack into Russia and make money. They could write their own program and make money. They can go through academia, right? You can go through the academics and do all of this stuff. You've got choices. If I'm a biology person, I really don't have a choice. There's not many alternate routes through through process of biology. I guess Frankenstein was one, right? Tried to figure out a way to reanimate dead tissue, <laughs> right? So. There's not many choices for, for some of us. Um, so you won't remember the pain, I promise you. But you have to go through it. All right, here's our first sign table. Uh, so let's take this fu <coughs> function we got, right, was... Uh, don't tell me, 2x squared minus x minus 1, right? And we learned to, to factor it uh, as x minus 1 and what, 2x plus 1? Does that sound right? Yes. We did that already, right? We split the middle term. Yeah? And I want to create, set up a sign table, but I also have to find my critical values. So the critical values are when I get a zero upstairs or a zero downstairs. So there is no downstairs, so there's going to be no critical. So there's no denominator, right? But at a numerator, I get a critical value of one and a negative one half. So I want to be thinking about the domain here. So from minus infinity to infinity, I got a negative one half and I got a one. Now, reminding you, we already know what this thing looks like, right? So I'm going to set up columns with my factors. Sorry, I'm going to set up rows with my factors and of the whole function.
my column dividers will be my, criti my critical values. So I had two factors, right? And then the product of them is the whole function. So that, I, that gives me three rows. I had two critical values. I need a, a column left of it, in between it, and right of it. So since I had two critical values, I have three, three rows, three uh, columns. I want to put in test values left of, in between, and right of my criticals. So I can put a test value here of, let's say, negative 1, here of 0, and here of 2. I can go anywhere. So remember, this is, this is a 1 here, right? So no matter what test value I put in, isn't the result going to be positive? Yep. And no matter what value I put in left of negative 1 half, look at the graph, isn't the result going to be positive? And anywhere between there, I'm going to get a result of negative. So we're just trying to take these factors to do a sign test to see if my, my function is above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So when I plug in negative 1 here, what do I get? I get a negative 2. I don't care about the negative 2. All I care about is negative. When I plug a negative 1 in here, I also get a negative, And the product of two negatives is positive. So my function between minus infinity and negative 1 is positive above the axis. When I plug in 0, I get a negative, I get a positive, so I get a negative. Between negative 1 half and 1, I get negative, underground, below the x-axis. When I plug in the 2, I get positive 1, I get positive 5, I don't care about the numbers, I just care about the sign. So I get a positive again. So this sign table is saying f of x is positive uh, on what? Negative infinity to negative 1, 1 half, sorry, union from 1 to infinity. f of x is negative on minus 1 half to 1. Always open intervals, right? Positive. I don't want it to be 0. I got the zeros from the criticals, right? Whenever I give you something like this, cheat. Use the graph, right? Use the graph to verify your sign table is correct. You'll do this all the way up through Calc 2. You'll do it, but we simplify it in Calc 1. For now, I'm going to torture you with it. Let's do one more, okay? Another sign table? One more sign table, yes? Good, good answer. This is number 30. Because I'll probably give you 27, number 27 to do for homework for next, not Monday coming up, the following one. You got enough homework already this week. I'm thinking no quizzes until not week coming up, the one after that. Okay? And we're doing our first test on chapter two and three. Then four and five is our second test. Our third test is six, seven, eight. Uh, let's see, we have, I'll probably give them around 12. On the quiz? Yeah. One, two, or three. Most likely three every time. Three questions, three quizzes. I'm going to drop at least three quizzes. So if you're absent on a Wednesday, you'll just get three zeros, and I'll drop those three zeros. All right, this is number 30.
So 2.2, number 30, sign table. So my function is 2x over x minus 2. I don't know what that looks like. Well, I do, but you don't. So we're going to graph it, right? We want to graph it. And we're going to cheat our sign table with the graph, meaning the sign table is going to tell us where this graph is above the x-axis or below the x-axis. But obviously, we're not, we're not idiots. We can see it, right? So, but let's graph it. I'll go into TI. My Y equal. I just have to be careful about uh, multi-terms. So divided by, wrap in parenthesis, X minus 2. You've got to be careful about multi-terms. If I don't wrap multi-term numerators and denominators, I'm going to come up with something weird. Um, and we're just going to zoom standard. Well, I kind of see it above ground later, above ground early, and after x is 0, it goes underground, right? You okay with me saying above ground, underground? x-axis, above the x-axis is, is up in the air, like the x-axis is, is the floor, right? I need my criticals. What are they? I need the numerator equal to zero and the denominator equal to zero. So I have two critical values. I'm going to have three columns again. So here's my number line, right? My crit criticals I got were zero and two. I'm saying I can put in zero, but I can't put in two there, right? I need a column of factors. I've got a factor of 2x. I've got a factor of x minus 2. And I've got the pro a quotient of factors is f of x. Oops, sorry. My column dividers are my criticals. I'm going to pick, uh, how are we doing? We okay? It's weird when you first start writing these. You'll see in Calc 1, we'll, we'll make it real simple. But so I guess it's like my father beat me. That's why I don't have kids, so I, don't, I can't beat my kids. But my math teachers made me do this, so. What, do you, what, what number do you like left of zero? Negative 1 is fine. I was going to pick negative 100. doesn't matter. Between 0 and 2, we like 1, I'm sure. And bigger than 2, how about 7? Anything. Anything I want, right? Right. Remember, looking at the graph, it's doing something like this. doesn't matter what x value I pick here, I'm going to get a positive out of it. It doesn't matter what x value I pick here, I'm going to get a negative out of it, right? Anything between the criticals. So when we plug in a negative 1 to 2x, we get negative, right? When we plug it into negative uh, x minus 2, we get negative 3, but all I care about is the negative, so I'm above ground there. Negative divided by a negative is a positive. Is this, this okay? You, 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 you getting it? This is, if you can learn this stuff from me, you're going to have such an easy time in Calc 1. You, will, you, you get a B or higher in this class, you're going to get the A in Calc. So, because it's easier, and it's not so eclectic, and it's, it flows, and it's instinctive. Right, Calc 1 is. This one's not. This one sucks. All over the place. Hectic. Crazy. Never-ending work. You won't remember the pain. Put in the 1, I get a positive and a negative, so that piece is underground. Obviously, look at the graph. And then when I put in the 7, 14, that's positive. 7 minus 2 is 5, that's positive. Positive divided by positive is still positive. Does it always turn out to be positive minus negative positive? No. 
just the two examples I picked at random turned out to be the same way. What you thinking? <laughs> 